The Continental Army during the American Revolution is about to make a monumental push forward to capture a canyon position. But the Redcoats are going to defend this position to the last man. They will not give it up. And the Continental Army will have to sacrifice a great deal to gain victory. What's going on gamers? It's your boy Daily Tactics here and today I am back with some more Born in the Fire America mod for Men of War Assault Squad 2. And we are going to be on a map that is familiar to the channel. This is the Canyon Defense map that we've done before. We did a Civil War battle on this map previously uh, and I thought this would be perfect to have a large scale musket British defense here as well. Um, I think a musket line battle is really fun to do for the American Revolution and uh, to have a line battle formation attacking and then a musket defense on barricades could be a really neat mixture. So this is probably one of the largest musket line defenses we've ever done. It should be really fun. So if you guys enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below your favorite fun fact from the American Revolution if you've got any for me. I'll be sure to heart a few of them uh, in the comment section later tonight. Either way guys, let's get into this thing. Hey gamers, real quick, I wanted to just take a second of your time to tell you about Daily Productions, my second channel, where I used to post a lot more Let's Play content, but more recently I started uploading really high quality edited videos with funny moments montages, as well as awesome storylines and things like that. Right now, the two videos up there that I am most proud of are some totally accurate Battlegrounds gameplay with me and Plastic Scott that was edited into a funny moments montage, as well as an Arma 3 Star Star Wars mod operation with the 187th, but I will be adding so much more content up to that channel in the near future. I'd really appreciate it if you went and checked out those videos and started watching over there as well if you're looking for some new places for content. Either way guys, hope you have a great day. On with the rest of this video. All right, gamers, let's get stuck into it here. We're gonna go in slow-mo for the first bit and see if the Redcoats can go ahead and defend. We have uh, roughly 500 or so Continental Army soldiers coming forward and about uh, 200 or so, probably a little bit more than 200 Redcoats defending here. Uh, so the Redcoats are outnumbered by a good bit, but of course this defensive line, the last time around we did it, was an absolutely dominating force. The uh, defenders were outnumbered about three to one with the uh, Confederates and the Union soldiers last time around, and uh, the defenders did manage to win. So we'll see if the same can hold true for an era just a little bit before here. Uh, you know, this is could be the difference in the weapons, or it could be the difference in the accuracy, things like that. Uh, there will be differences in this battle, of course, uh, because this is a full, what, 100 years, a little less than 100 years earlier. So, you know, it could, could have some differences here. Either way, I forgot that Born in the Fire America mod is really boring if you go in full slow-mo speed. So we're gonna get out of that and go into normal speed here. Their reloading time just takes so long that you end up watching them reload for super, super long periods of time there uh, if you're in slow-mo. So we're not gonna go ahead and do that. Either way, a large number of Continental Army soldiers are going down, like a lot, a lot, but they are pushing very heavily forward. The last time we did this battle, the Union soldiers didn't really push all that quickly. I mean, look at this, whoa, Continental Army. Okay, we're gonna have to go in semi-slow mode here. Um, the Continental Army soldiers are already at the trenches here. Last time around in the Civil War battle, there was a skirmish for an extremely long time outside of the trenches, but now the Continental Army is already in the trenches, already attacking and already slaughtering a large number of these Redcoat soldiers, so clearly, we are having some major differences in how this combat is being fought currently. We are going for a highly aggressive tactic here from the attacking forces, uh, which could make the difference, I suppose, in if this defense succeeds or not. Of course, there's still a lot of Redcoats left alive, and as they pop up here in this second line of defense, they are taking with them a lot of Continental soldiers. However, the first line of defense here is getting somewhat slaughtered by the oncoming 
Continental Army. Okay, let's go back into normal speed here. Seems like really it's only the far right where they're attacking. A few soldiers in the middle coming up as well, but they seem to be getting gunned down a lot easier than they are on the far right. So let's watch some far right content over here for a little bit. Uh, it looks like some soldiers have already made it into the into the trenches and they're actually firing from within right now. Uh, and we're also hearing some bayonet stabs and things like that going on. So the red coats are falling in droves on the right side, but the left side is still nearly entirely intact here. Uh, officer pops up and takes a shot to this enemy soldier right there. But the pistols for the officers are just not quite as powerful as a full on musket so it does take two shots to take those guys out but with the musket fire it's just a one shot one kill kind of situation well I should say most of the time every once in a while you get a two shot killer uh, with the musket but for the most part it is a one shot type of kill all right I think at this point let's check in on the battlefield and yellow are dead uh, red coat soldiers red are dead continental army soldiers here Obviously, the Continental Army has lost about double what the Redcoats have lost here, uh, but the progress that they are making in this battle is absolutely phenomenal currently. And look, they are now storming the middle sections here after the right has, for the most part, capitulated under the weight of the enemy army here. So the Redcoats are now getting overthrown in other areas of the trenches right now. Absolutely insane what's going on. I was not expecting this defense to uh, crumble like this quite so quickly. Big grenade, though, from a grenadier over this way. Might have been this chap right here, but that was actually very, very large. Kept their line alive for a solid amount longer here. Bunch of rounding fire going on from these soldiers here. There's still some chaps in the front line here, too, by the way, uh, who are still managing to take out a number of these redcoats. More grenades going out from the grenadiers. That is good to see. Maybe that'll keep the lines alive for a little bit longer as well. All of the flags back here have fallen, however, so no more flag bearers. Perhaps morale is low because of the lack of flags going on right now. Who knows, but the Continental Army is fully coming through now, and they are starting to slaughter the last few of these Redcoat soldiers that are down here. And there's bayonet wiping going on too. Oh, that was like a point-blank shot right there. Ah, yikes. Okay, there's something very brutal about Board of the Fire America mob. But there we go. This entire trench line is now down for the count. And the next trench line is up for the Redcoats to defend. They do have a solid number of troopers back here. I'd say about 100 troopers are located back here. Maybe a little bit less than 100, but still a solid amount are back there. Um, and they could easily defend. This is actually where the Civil War battle came to an end. These soldiers that were on these back ramparts here managed to fully stop the assaulting Union soldiers. So the Redcoats could potentially have a repeat situation going on right here. But the Continental Army is being smart. They're utilizing the cover that they have access to back here. That was initially, of course, the enemy cover. So perhaps this uh, defensive line that they've now established will be maintained and they'll be able to hold that out and uh, skirmish for quite a while against the Redcoats. A few of them are pushing out, though. This was the major problem that the Union soldiers started upon themselves, is that they started to push too hard they needed to skirmish for quite a while, like weaken the lines of the defenders and then push in. But basically the Union soldiers just full sent it forward. Uh, it seems like the Continental Army might be rectifying that mistake for the United States here. And uh, they might be skirmishing for a little while before sending forces forward. But more and more forces are coming forward as we speak right now. So we'll just have to go ahead and wait and see. Lots of dead uh, Continental Army soldiers over here on the right side. Uh, the same cannot be said for the Redcoats. We've got one dead officer here, but for the most part, uh, a lot of these chaps are still alive and kicking. Actually, there's a ton of officers back here. I guess all of the officers were like, ah, I'm going to stick to the back, actually. You know, I, I'm not going to fight in the front lines. No sorry, Bob. Let the uh, idiot officers do that. Us smart officers are going to chill in the way, way back of the battlefield. Actually, the middle, which is obviously the weakest part of the Redcoat defenses, uh, have died up in here. Uh, so now it's going to be up to the right and the left, although the, the middle is very, very weak here. Um, this was actually supposed to be an artillery position, but I decided not to have that because I wanted this to be a true infantry battle. I always think that artillery is fun, um, and it's great to have, you know, and I love vehicles in Men of War and things like that, but every once in a while, I always want just a pure infantry battle. Actually, when I was a kid, um, well, 
not so much a kid, when I was in high school, uh, <laughs> and I first started getting into Men of War Assault Squad 2, and the first people I used to watch was Shermanator, as well as Prince of Macedon, I always wanted to see infantry-only battles. That was like my favorite thing to see from those two, was infantry-only battles. I don't know why, it was like an obsession of mine, it was just so fun to watch infantry-only battles for me, uh, that that's what I really, really uh, searched for in their videos and things like that. And I think that's always kind of stuck with me a little bit, is just like the love of watching infantry battles. I, I don't know why, I just think it's more entertaining. Let me know what you guys think, I don't know, am I weird in this, only liking in- Well, I like tank battles and artillery and stuff like that, I like those things in battle, it's fun, it adds some diversity to the content and stuff like that, but, I don't know, I- I'm wondering if you guys also like the, uh, the allure of infantry-only battles. There, there's just something really, really special about them to me, and I really enjoy them. Either way, the Redcoats are hanging in there. They are starting to take more losses as the Continental Army gets closer and closer, but I'm actually really impressed at how they've managed to stop this charge that's been happening from the Continental Army here. They have just fully sent it, uh, and they are going to hold out to the last man, and I'm very impressed at the number of kills they've been getting. Although this side is starting to really fall now, so I am a little bit worried for these guys. Ugh, yeah. We are starting to see the left side over here for the Redcoats completely crumble. The right side's still hanging in there, but if the left fails, then these guys are going to be able to come in and uh, flank around the back. I think this is actually going to be an L for the Redcoats, but they hang in there for quite a while. You gotta admit, these guys have been mighty impressive in their fighting, um, and, and they've given it their all, but it seems like in, in this aspect, in the American Revolution, this line is unable to hold, although in the Civil War, it did hold quite well, but uh, this is not the Civil War, baby. This is the American Revolution. Oh my god, why did you do that? What? Why on earth? <laughs> that was so stupid. Oh god, the right side is now having a uh, massive skirmish going on over here, too. Last of the red coat soldiers that are still alive are slowly getting whittled down. Many of them caught reloading right now um, and basically waiting for their deaths, waiting for the Continental Army to come too far forward. Yep, okay, that's a gut shot right there. And that's going to be the end of it. The uh, Continental Army does secure the victory here. Let's check out the losses. Yellow are dead redcoats. Red are dead Continental Army soldiers. I'd say the Continental Army did lose about double, but they managed to come out of this with a victory at the end of the day. Really fun battle. I had a blast doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please be sure to hit that like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you haven't already. And comment down below if you'd like to see some more battles like this in the future. Either way, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content. And hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.